Surprisingly, however, the Ghana of today, which does live up to its name, being the fastest growing economy in Africa, the seventh leading producer of gold in the world, and Africa's third largest aluminium exporter, does not share boundaries with the Ghana Empire of Gold. Today's Ghana, which had previously been referred to as the Gold Coast during colonial times, adopted the name Ghana upon independence, championed by the well known revolutionist Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. It was not for nothing that Ghana took up this great name, for under its new leader and revolutionary Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana took a very bold step towards becoming a great nation. This step, which was termed, and I quote, the largest single investment in the economic development plans of Ghana, was the decision to build the Akosombo Dam. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, a community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship rather than global PT is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. The Akosombo Dam, which some refer to as the Volta Dam, is a hydroelectric dam on the Volta River in southern eastern Ghana in the Akosombo Gorge and part of the Volta River Authority. The decision to build this dam was a bold one indeed because it meant flooding part of the Volta River Basin and the subsequent creation of the Volta Lake. The Volta Lake is the world's largest man-made lake by surface area, covering 8,502 square kilometers, which equates to more than 3.5% of Ghana's land area. The primary purpose of this bold and carefully calculated scheme was to produce enough power to separate aluminium from bauxite a substance which Ghana had been richly blessed with. Ghana's aluminium reserves are estimated at 900 million tons and she has the potential to produce 10 to 20 million tons a year. Aluminium is undeniably valuable, especially with the vast inventions and innovations made in the 20th century. It is much sought after as it is used to produce material for airplanes because of its resistance to ultraviolet radiation, its lightweight and resistance to corrosion. It is also used in power lines because it offers less resistance to current flow than other metals. Ghana was a newly independent state and hence she could not hope to provide funding for a dam which was estimated to have cost about $258 million in its entirety in the 1960s. Compensating for inflation, that same amount would be pretty much the same as approximately $2.5 billion. It was more than obvious that her only hope of making this project to become a reality was to get funding from external parties. This they got from the World Bank, the Volta Aluminium Company, which was an American company and from the United Kingdom. The dam was to be built about 60 miles from the mouth of the 400 km long Lake Volta River in the southeast region of the country, precisely at the Akosombo site, and an aluminium smelter built at Tema by Volta Aluminium Company, Valco and Kaiser Aluminium. A 700 mile network of power lines were to be installed throughout southern Ghana and to principal cities. The goal was for the aluminium smelter to eventually provide the revenue necessary for establishing local bauxite mining and refining, hence eliminating the necessity to import alumina for aluminium production. The Akosombo Dam is a high rock fill embankment dam. It is 660 meter long, 366 meter wide at the base and 140 meter high with a volume of 7.9 million cubic meters. The spillways are twin gate controlled with a spill capacity of 34,000 cubic meters per second. The dam's original electrical output was 912 megawatts, which was upgraded to 1,020 megawatts in a retrofit project that was completed in 2006. The Akosombo Dam was built by Impregilo, an Italian consortium which got the construction contract just after they had finished work on the Kalipa Dam on the Zambezi River between Zambia and Zimbabwe which was probably why they were deemed capable of building the dam. They carried out the dredging of the riverbed and dewatering of the channel and completed the dam a month earlier than scheduled. The project team encountered a few milestones including the difficulties of excavating extremely hard ground in the area, as is often done when building rock field dams. Materials dug up in the case quartzite, a type of sandstone, were used to construct the scheme. The Volta River also dealt this project an unfair hand as it flooded in 1963, setting the project back three months as workers had to dredge stretches of the riverbed again. A total of 28 workers died over the five years of the project's construction. 12 of the 28 were killed in an explosion on the site in 1966, 
There's a memorial for all of them in the nearby St. Barbara's Catholic Church in the town of Akosombo. The Akosombo Dam was beneficial to some industrial and economic activities as it led to the addition of lake transportation, fishing, new farming activities along the shoreline and tourism. The power generated has provided for Ghana's primary energy needs while also supplying power to Togo and Benin, her neighbors. Initially, the power production capabilities of the dam was far beyond the actual demand. However, the demand since the dam's establishment has resulted in the doubling of hydropower production. Power demands and other unforeseen environmental trends have resulted in rolling blackouts and major power outages. An overall trend of lower lake levels has been observed due in large part to climate change causing low reservoir levels, sometimes below the requirement for operation of the Akosombo Dam. There has also been a steady decline in agricultural productivity along the lake and the associated tributaries following the construction of the Akosombo Dam. The land surrounding the lake Volta is not nearly as fertile as the formerly cultivated land currently residing underneath the lake and heavy agricultural activity has since exhausted the already inadequate fertile soils. Downstream agricultural systems, which used to be very effective due to periodic flooding of the Volta River, are losing soil fertility without these periodic floods that brought nutrients to the soil that have since been halted by the construction of the dam. All these have led to rising need for fertilizers of commercially intensive agriculture, which in turn has resulted in increased fertilizer runoff into the river. This, along with runoff from nearby cattle stocks and sewage pollution, has caused eutrophication of the river waters. The nutrient enrichment and lower water movement has allowed for the invasion of aquatic weeds. These weeds have become a veritable challenge to water navigation and transportation. The weeds also provide the necessary habitat for black fly, mosquitoes and snails, all vectors of waterborne illnesses such as Bilazia, river blindness and malaria. Since the installment of the dam, the frequency of occurrence of these diseases has significantly increased. Resettlement villages in particular have shown an increase in disease prevalence since the establishment of Lake Volta, with the proximity of a village to the lake being proportional to its likelihood for disease prevalence. Children and fishermen have been most affected by this. The physical health of local communities has been diminished from the loss of shellfish populations like clam and shrimp due to the altering of the aquatic habitat. These aquatic species provided an essential source of dietary protein. Similarly, the rural and industrial economies have experienced the financial losses associated with the decimation of river aquaculture. Over 80,000 people were forcibly relocated. To most of these people, this was not all a good turn of events. They lost their primary sources of income, their homes, family, gravesites, community, stability, and eventually their important social values. Insufficient planning resulted in the relocation of communities to areas that were not capable of providing for their former livelihoods and traditions. The loss of the naturally fertile soils beneath Lake Volta essentially led to the loss of traditional farming practices. Poor living conditions within resettlement villages has been demonstrated by population reduction since resettlement. Increased economic risks and experiences of poverty are associated with those communities most impacted by the Volta River's development. The extensive human migration and degradation of natural resources within the Volta Basin area are the products of poverty and population pressure. Poverty and unfavorable resettlement conditions have been the leading cause of increased migration. This migration enabled the contraction of HIV and has since led to its heightened prevalence within Volta Basin communities. Mania Krobo and Yellow Krobo, which lie within the southwest portion of the Volta Basin, are predominantly indigenous communities that have attained a disproportionate prevalence of HIV. The situation underlines the strength of the local factors upon these districts. Commercial sex work was established in response to the thousands of male workers that were in the area for building the dam. This is one need many would agree would have been better left unattended. 10% of childbearing females from Maya, Krona, and Yellow Krobo migrated out of their districts during this time. In 1986, research showed that 90% of AIDS victims in Ghana were women, and 96% of these women had recently lived outside the country. Sigostomiasis has also become an increasing call for concern within the construction of the Akosombo Dam. Reservoir induced seismicity, increased earth crust movement, has been recorded due to the coastal readjustments from the added weight of the water within Lake Volta. Continuous coastal erosion has been occurring due to an eastward shift of the river's mouth. The changes in the river hydrology have altered the local heat budget, which has caused microclimatic changes such as a decreasing rain and higher mean monthly temperatures. One of the negative consequences of the construction of the dam was neocolonialism. 
whose foundation was laid by the financing of the dam. Neocolonialism was a term coined by Kwame Krumah himself. It is the socio-economic and political control exercised over a decolonized nation economically, linguistically and culturally by a neocolonialist country to open up the national economy to its corporations. In simpler terms, it is the use of economic, political and cultural means, usually by capitalist economies, to express colonial power over decolonized nations. Whether or not, Ghana's decision to float over 3.5% of their land was more beneficial to them than detrimental, which is yet to be determined. But personally, I think if not for the downfall of their first great visionary and revolutionist Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana would be among the world's greatest economic giants today. Do not forget to share your thoughts in the comment section.